if you think you're not enough. Welcome back. Join me while I break down another movie plot. Enjoy the memories and watch out for spoilers. While camping in the Scottish Highlands, a woman gives her boyfriend a solid silver letter opener as a present. That night while the full moon's out, a visitor slowly unzips the tent before snatching the lady. When her boyfriend refuses to let go she is slashed in front of him and dragged away. Before the man can arm himself with the tiny silver sword, the attacker returns and he is torn to shreds off screen. At around the same time in a forest in Wales, a man is on the run while being chased by a group of military with sniffer dogs. They manage to cut him off but he puts up a valiant effort in defiance until eventually being overwhelmed. It turns out Private Cooper is on a training exercise in hopes of joining Captain Ryan's special forces, and has just jumped to the head of the class after evading them for 22 hours. Under the guise that it would take away his attacker's ability to locate him, Ryan orders that Cooper shoot one of the dogs as a test of his willingness to follow orders. Cooper refuses so Ryan does it himself for no reason. When Coop tries attack the captain he is easily beaten and told to return to his old team. Four weeks later Cooper and a squad of six soldiers are being dropped into the Scottish Highlands on another exercise, led by the team Sergeant Harry Wells. They synchronize watches when realizing that Spoons left his back at the barracks. Wells lends him his while Joe sits around complaining about missing England versus Germany on the telly. The squad is armed with blanks and tasked with the objective of making it past a team of special forces led by Ryan. Cooper's located a weak point in the defenses and the six British Army soldiers trek across country toward their target, while stopping for breaks here and there. During one rest Coop tells them about the beast of the boat and more. About a month ago a rescue team found the remains of a couple of campers in the area with their tent ripped to shreds, the paper claimed it was an escaped lunatic but no one's been caught. Every year a few hikers and backpackers go missing in the highlands without a single trace. The first night they set up camp with cliffs on all sides and talk about their biggest fears, Bruce's being other people, Spoon's being castration, Cooper's being spiders, while Joe's is penalty shootouts and Private Terry's is Joe himself during the penalty shootouts. When the Sarge is asked he says the little things that make your hair stand up. The example that he gives is that of Eddie Oswald, a soldier with a devil tattoo that stood on a landmine. The tattoo of Satan remained as the only piece of flesh unscorched by the explosion. Spoon tries to lighten the mood when suddenly a cow carcass crashes down into the middle of the camp setting Terry off with the blanks. Thinking for a moment their position's been compromised. Cooper examines it to find teeth marks, so with the animal dying of natural causes Sarge refuses to break radio silence. Meanwhile the full moon rises on the special forces as Ryan begins to get stalked around his camp. Without any warning or sighting of the creature, he is set upon as his blood splatters on a rock. The next morning Spoon finds that the cow had wandered off a cliff having been wounded nearby, so Sarge wants to check it out since it's on their way. They track it all the way to the blood-soaked campsite of the special forces having all been savaged in the night. The bodies of the men are missing but the guns remain loaded having never got off a single round. The radios have been destroyed and the sole survivor of the massacre reveals himself to be Captain Ryan. With a slash across his chest he cryptically claims that there was only supposed to be one, as the tranquilizers and nets around the camp suggest that they weren't there just for training. Bruce can't find a signal on their own radio but discovers a locating device inside having been planted by Ryan earlier. Night falls in 30 minutes so the team take what weapons they can, but Ryan says there's nothing they can do. Wells tells him to shut up trying to keep his men's morale up when howls begin to be heard in the distance. Bruce is put on rear guard and the team begins retreating in the opposite direction. When contacts made Brucey's gun jams, so he begins to flee but runs straight into a tree branch impaling himself and being snatched. Wells returns but finds Brucey's dead body, he gets attacked and almost escapes but has his abdomen slashed and his guts protrude. Before he is killed Cooper returns and bullets are shown to at least hold the creatures back momentarily. Coop saves and carries his gutted sergeant back to his squad who are now in the middle of a firefight with multiple attackers racing through the forest. They make it to a road just as a vehicle is passing and are rescued by the driver. All of a sudden a claw pierces through the roof and the truck gets surrounded, requiring Joe to stick his knife through it as the driver accelerates away, and howls of pain are heard in the distance. The woman introduces herself as Megan and says she heard gunfire so came to help. Needing to get treatment for Wells, she takes them to her friend's nearby farmhouse but they find no one home except the family's dog Sam. While Ryan is shown to be recovering and getting much stronger. No one in the Glen owns a phone for 50 miles and Megan says the nearest town is back in the direction they came. With no other option, Cooper and Spoon make for the car but find it already destroyed, with night time and the monsters having arrived. To cause a distraction and make it back inside, Coop blows up Megan's truck but all hell breaks loose. It takes half of them to push back a single creature enough to lock the door, 
As Megan fights against Sam tugging on Wells's bandages, and Terry disgusted by everything throws up on Ryan's head before he has time to shoot another dog. Coop takes command of the team with Wells injured and they begin to mount a defensive. Spoon begins enjoying himself likening them to the hundred British that took on the Zulu, while Joe's crapping himself. Cooper and Megan take Wells upstairs and put him in a bed before super gluing his wounds closed, but not before a few heavily induced remarks by him first. Is it my birthday? Hey! I'll tell you what, I love him. I love you! Like the mate that I, that I love. Sausages. Megan explains that she is a zoologist who heard rumors of a creature in these parts and went searching. She discovered them to be werewolves that hunt in a pack every full moon. Cooper looks over the house finding it to be owned by a Celtic family that has lived in the Glen for centuries, while Spoon finds a sword hidden away in a footlocker adding to his British balls of steel, but Coop takes it. Finally addressing Ryan's apparent full recovery, Megan disarms him with a frying pan so that the team can hold him down, revealing his wounds have almost completely healed. Just then the power goes out and the werewolves begin their attack. Spoon holds off the entry and exit way by himself, while two of the beasts attack from either side trying to reach in and unlock the doors. He drops his last ammo clip while pushing against a door, requiring Cooper to bail him out with some boiling water, then Spoon uses the pot itself. As Coop holds one door Spoon is punched to the ground and almost crushed by a gas canister, so he throws out his only grenade. Joe defends the living room with his shotgun, effectively holding them back until getting too close and having the wolf snatch his gun and fire back. They make a trade as the werewolf throws the gun back and Joe throws a grenade out. After reloading, one of the beasts grabs Joe through the window and holds him for another to get inside. But Cooper comes in with the sword and takes off the beast's arm with a single swing. As Spoon nails down the doors and fingers, Coop goes to check on Wells while briefly helping on his way up. A werewolf lurks above the sleeping sergeant as Cooper is attacked from behind by a second through a window and drops his gun. He uses a camera to distract the first while striking the second with the sword and kicking its grip loose. Retrieving his gun, Wells finally wakes up and the two fill the intruder with bullets. Terry keeps an eye on Ryan the whole time while doing a good job holding off the dining room, but when everything dies down and the tree line goes quiet, he turns his back on the window in confidence and is grabbed from behind and dragged out, as Megan watches on barely reacting to the glass in her hand. After the battle, Wells officially gives command over to Cooper and passes out. The surviving soldiers regroup in the dining room and come up with a plan, if they can make it to sunrise the werewolves will revert to human form. Orders from Cooper was for short controlled bursts but it was easier said than done, and the squad have used all but two clips and a few slugs. Though the werewolves don't know this which is the only thing currently holding them back. Knowing they won't survive another attack, Megan tells them about an old Land Rover that the family keep in the shed that will need hot wiring. Joe's worked up at Ryan's constant snickering and volunteers, while needing something fast and loud Spoon is elected to be the distraction. What? You are. Spoon jumps out one side of the house and gets the werewolf's attention with a flare. Just before it reaches him he runs back to the house and climbs up a rope. The werewolf follows him and almost makes it inside but Megan uses the camera to distract it long enough for them to cut it loose. During this time Joe legs it to the shed and gets inside the Land Rover. The lights turn on revealing a werewolf feeding on a still living Terry, before it rips his head off and throws it at the windshield. Joe escapes its attack and pulls up at the front door of the house, then feels breathing on his neck as another sits behind him. With no other option he goes at it head on but is quickly killed. Ready to be picked up, the team are greeted at the door by a werewolf feasting on Joe, it leaps at Spoon but Megan holds it off with a pistol until they can seal the place up again. Ryan finally confesses to an angry Cooper the real reason for them being there. The government sent his team on a mission to capture the creature so that they could weaponize it, but it turned out to be they. The weak point in the special forces was deliberately left there for Cooper to find. That was Cooper's bait, while his team was Ryan's. Wells punches Ryan and it begins to start a transformation behind the table. Wolf Ryan pops out from behind it standing 8 feet tall and knocks Cooper away, who in return plunges the sword straight through his back. Spoon uses half their remaining bullets trying to hit Ryan as he breaks out a window and runs off into the forest. They all come to the same conclusion that the werewolves must be the owners of the house and thus won't give up and go home as they already are. Megan says the pack will be using the shed to recover so they decide to blow it up with a gas canister and the Land Rover. Wells is feeling fully recovered and shows Cooper that he is supernaturally healed like Ryan did, so he urges Coop to take the vehicle and escape while he holds the werewolves off. Cooper and Spoon don't care for escaping anymore and just want to kill a few of the dogs before going out. After piercing the fuel tank and driving the Land Rover into it, Wells throws a Molotov and the shed goes up in a huge explosion. Coop turns around to Megan who reveals that there was no one in the barn, she just wanted them to destroy their only means of transportation. 
As a member of the family she had been suppressing the transformation this whole time and genuinely wanting to protect them, she has now given up fighting it and let the family inside. She begins to turn but Wells headshots her and they flee. Cooper and Wells run upstairs while Spoon gets separated into the kitchen. He runs out of bullets as a werewolf enters and begins to fight it with fists, avoiding all of its labored swings and landing plenty of his own. The left hook knife stab combo does little damage as it sits back up and they continue to fight. After throwing damn near half the room at it Spoon knocks it down with a frying pan and flexes above it, but is disarmed by a second that enters having needed to cheat. Spoon is consumed as the werewolves continue to spare the family dog. Above the kitchen Cooper runs into the bathroom while Wells into the separated toilet. As an attacker breaks its way into Cooper, he smashes through the wall into the toilet with a makeshift pick before sticking it into the wolf's head. He continues through into the next bedroom as Wells holds them off with an aerosol flamethrower. Using the wardrobe to buy them just a few seconds more, Wells shoots their way through the floorboards into the kitchen below, finding nothing left of Spoon but his watch and insides. They barricade the entrance with the table but notice a cellar hidden underneath. Cooper goes in alone as Wells plans to sacrifice himself as he is beginning to transform. He struggles but manages to seal the door behind Coop and cuts the gas line. As the werewolves enter and slowly surround him, Yellow Eyes Wells uses the oven started to blow the creatures and the entire house into oblivion. Coop survives the explosion but realizes the basements used for storing their meat for later. Suddenly Ryan shows up with the sword still protruding out of his chest and attacks Coop. He tries to stick it in his mouth but Sam protects Cooper causing Ryan to drop his meal. The silver letter opener sits next to Coop so he picks it up and jams it into the last remaining werewolf, severely weakening it. He retrieves his dropped pistol and puts possibly the last bullet in the entire house through Ryan's head, alas avenging the dog. With the sun rising, Cooper exits the ruins of the farmhouse with a new good boy. And the movie ends. So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks. <laughs>